Today we're doing them up test with uh, Pamela. Pamela, Pamela. We've come all the way over to Sunderland to show you Macam's how it's done. So Pamela knows all about it. She's never driven over here, so she's very, very brave to do this one. It's a, probably Sunderland's most difficult route. So, have any questions before we start? Um, no. Okay, one sh show me questions. Tell me how you take your brake lights work before starting the journey. I'm going to operate the brake um, and I'm going to, to make use of reflections um, or ask someone to help me and, and have a look around the car. Good. Right, just follow the road ahead at all times unless you're directed by signs of Mark. And we're just going to follow the sat I'm not going to tell you about it because I've already done it. So, if you just make your way off, get yourself going. Let the show begin, Pamela. Mm -hmm. First minor fault for you, Pamela. Pamela, we've come all the way over to Sunday and you forget to look over your shoulder. How do you work that one out? Now, if Pamela passes this mock test, I'll be very surprised. The reason for this is it's probably the hardest route in Sunderland. Why it's the hardest is because there is lots of places where learners slip up. So I think off the top of my head, there's about six hot spots at least where learners like to fail on a consistent basis. I feel sorry for you learners in Sunderland because I couldn't even pass my driving test over here. So first minor fall for Pamela if it gets a look over her shoulder. There was a car behind. Uh, it was pulling in, but probably, probably could have signaled to move off also. I know there's nothing coming ahead, but I'll give you that one. After 100 yards, turn left, Castletown Way. Then, at the end of the road, turn left. Turn left, then, at the end of the road, turn left. We've just pulled out of the test centre and this is a hot spot right here. So learners, if you look at these traffic lights, you've got one to your left, one to your right, and the back up like the secondary light down at the, in the middle. Now what happens here is a green filter comes on and guess what learners do? They sit like lemons and fail the driving test. They're just focusing on the red traffic light. So you need to watch for the green filter. Now Pamela must be on the ball here. Because when she sees the green area, she goes straight round. So this is good work from Pamela. Well done. After 100 yards, turn right, Rutlet Road. Good work from Pamela, she spotted the 20 signs and when she gets to this junction she sees a van to the right indicating left so she waits till the van makes the turn. Well done Pamela, this is good work and stop on the rising brake and show these Macrams how smooth the drive you are man. Road. 
turn left. Pamela, the last junction, your signal was a little bit late, but I didn't mark it. Now, the reason for this is there was nothing behind. Could have been a different story if there had been a car really close behind. Um, when I've asked to pull up on the left here, you've made hard work yourself. You've drove all the way up the road and pulled up really close to the blue car. I would have just pulled up just before this mini where the drop curb is or just after the drop curb or a bit further up the road because them cars to your right are all fully on the pavement just about. Minor fault number two for Pamela. Pamela forgets to look over her right shoulder. Pamela, why are you looking over your left shoulder? I've never taught you to look over your left shoulder when moving off from the left-hand side of the road. When pupils um, look over both shoulders, they tend to forget the left one. If you forget the left one, the examiner's not going to say anything. If you forget the right one, now he's going to mark it, give you a minor fault. If you keep repeating, it becomes an habitual fault, it'll give you a serious fault. If there's something there in your blind spot, then you feel straight away.
Canterbury Road. First series fall for Pamela. Oh. What happens here, Pamela, is you're not anticipating the lights changing back to red. What you should have done was took your foot off the gas when you got a bit closer and be ready to stop. Learners, when you're approaching roadworks that are controlled by traffic lights, there is no stop line. You need to look for the sign that says, wait here until green light shows. Now, what Pamela does is the light changes, but she stops in time. I think she even gets the mirrors in, which is good. But um, she stops a car length past the sign because she's just staring at the traffic light. When the lights change, she should have looked for the sign and stopped maybe a half a car length, a car length back from it. Then take the second left. Now, Pamela misses the, the junction to the left. Now, remember, learners, you've done nothing wrong, so you can't get marked for this on this occasion. Um, so what you need to do is just forget and just drive on and let the examiner or the sat-nav redirect you. Now, I did have a pupil fail once because um, he missed the left-hand turn and the examiner even said, well, go on, just drive on and talk here. So he cancelled his signal and, and he came the next roundabout. Now he's still thinking he'd failed because he'd missed the turn while well, he'd done nothing wrong. And then he goes and pulls out in front of a car at the roundabout and fails his test. So if you miss the turn, just be cool learners and just let him read directly. You've done nothing wrong. You've just gone past where we needed oh. to go. This is good work from Pamela. She sees the cyclist, she checks her middle mirror in the perfect level, could have the right door mirror also. But if, had Pamela not overtook these cyclists, I would have given her a serious fault. If you look at the road, it's a lovely wide road and there's loads of room to get past. So learners, when, you, when you're on approaching the cyclists like this, um, they're doing about 10, 15 miles an hour. Keep a couple of car lengths back, just left the centre, see if to do so. Now, when you see a gap, just get your foot on, get round them. Give them about a metre and a half if you can. Um, what you don't do is if there's an oncoming car, you don't overtake them and cause the oncoming car to slow down. And when you pull back in, don't cut in too early because you don't want to knock them off the bikes, do you? Turn around when possible. So we turn the next road to the left. And just ignore the sign of the moment next left. Pamela, this signal goes on way too early for turning left. I, I don't mark it because you've, you've got, the, the I think it's a bus stop and the double yellow lines. But when you're turning left, you're only doing about 30 miles an hour. I like that you use your mirror straight away. That's, that's great. That's good stuff. But you don't mirror and signal at the same time. You look in mirrors and then you, you take into consideration how fast you're going, how far away you are from the junction. So as a guideline... The faster you go, the earlier you signal. If you're only doing about 30 miles an hour, then I'd probably signal anywhere from two to three bus lengths back away from the junction. Maybe it's a bit earlier, but this is far too early. I don't mark it because there's double yellow lanes. Turn left, then turn around when possible. Minor fault number three for you, um, Pamela. What happens is, I think you're not sure where you're going. What, what happens is you go around the corner with a clutch down. Now, you should have the clutch up on approach so the car's being driven by the engine. It would be a scary thought going around corners like this when there's snow and ice on the roads. I wouldn't like that. Um, 
I think you just, I've never seen you do this one before, so this is a new one. I think it's just because you're unsure where you're going and you forgot to bring the clutch up. Turn around when possible. At the end of the road, turn right, Craig Avon Road. Pamela does really well here with the speed bumps. You, um, I've seen learners fly over these and fail the driving test for them. So she spots them well ahead and she goes over them nice and so. So that's good work from Pamela. In this meeting situation up here, remember um, these are both giving way to each other. So it's dead simple. If the other car stops, you go. If the other car goes, then you stop. This is good work from Pamela. This is a little hot spot where learners like the field. Believe it or not, when asked to turn right third exit here, learners drive over into that lane. For some strange reason, I'm guessing they're thinking the parking on the right hand side is maybe a lane or something. But Pamela does this good. So well done, Pamela. Thank you. Go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, Grange Road, then bear right, Ringway. Fault number four for you, Pamela. This is a 30 mile per hour road. Um, you've got a lovely clear road. You'd be expected to do near 30 along here, maybe it's just under, but 23, 24 is a bit on the slow side. Three 
100 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, A1231, Wessington Way. Then, you have reached your destination on your left. Line of fault number five for Pamela. Pamela, great mirror work. Been impressive mirror work so far. Um, but you need to look for the time of the signal. So when you look at mirrors, then look down the right hand side to see if any junctions are on the right hand side. You can see this one on the right hand side. Go right on the roundabout and take the third exit. Then you have reached your destination on your left. Minor fault number six for Pamela goes down undue hesitation. Pamela, this is a very difficult roundabout to get out of. You've got to, to your right, you have a dual carriageway. And you've got to be careful. You've got to have to watch both lanes. I've had a few fields here over the years. Now, what happens is there is a gap at the roundabout. The car approaching from your right is about a bus length away from the roundabout. And what happens is that there's a white van comes round from your left and blocks that car anyway. So that was a good chance to drive your car onto the roundabout. But that was the only chance you missed. There was no other safe gaps after that. So well done for staying calm and just getting on with the job. the test now for Pamela this is a nightmare for learners in Sun and honestly they hate this roundabout this has had a lot of feels over the years this roundabout brings back painful memories for me I remember sitting in the one in one of the tests and she was asked to turn right at this roundabout the third exit what happened was she went in the right lane then she swung across two lanes to the left then she swung back over the two lanes back to the right and then two lanes back to the left. I was sitting in the back of the car about two inches tall with my mouth open like a goldfish. I was absolutely bricking it. At the end of the test, I had to apologise to the exam. I said, look, I'm really sorry about that. He says, oh, don't worry about it. He says, but you clearly wasn't ready for spiral roundabouts. Little did he know that our last 10 hours of driving just spent on these spiral roundabouts. So I got me backside smacked that day. Good work here Pamela, I like how you see that the, the lane it spirals out to the left, it splits into two and you pick the left of the two, so well done with this Pamela.
minor fault number seven for you. Pamela goes down to road markings now. The second exit is just straight off where that wagon's going. Now, if you look in front, you should have took up this left lane. Now, it's, it's leading you off the roundabout. What you do do is you go around in the middle lane. Now, very lucky here had there been a car come round in the right lane, taking that position up, taking that middle lane up, you could have gotten a serious fault. But you only get a minor because you've, you've gone in the middle lane. You should have gone to the left lane. I think I think that grey big hairy wagon driver put you off a little bit here. Here's a shout out for Miss for Tate School of Motoring. You see this douchebag in front? I have heard he's he's I know he's a grade A driving instructor and he's supposed to have a very high pass rate, this guy. I wonder who taught him to become an instructor. Hmm. I taught him to become a driving instructor. Oh, did you? Wow. <laughs> Mr. Tate. Fault number eight for you, Pamela. Uh, could have easily been a serious this one. This is another hot spot in Sunland. Learn the drivers when they come down here that don't realize that you've got to join the carriageway. Now, learners, when you come down a dual carriageway on your test, if you have the choice whether to keep to the left or move into the right lane, the examiner will tell you what to do. But when you haven't got a choice, that means it's a slip road and you're going to have to join the dual carriageway. Pamela reacts very late here and luckily gets away with it. We're going to be leaving at the next exit. Sorry? We're going to be leaving at the next exit. Okay. Fault number nine, Pamela. You, you go around this bend in too high of a gear, and the car starts to cough and sputter on. This is another hot spot for learner drives in Sunland. Um, they don't see this bend, and the drive they approach it far too fast. You got away with it, just picked up a minor. You did signal a little bit late, but I didn't mark it because we only had the tanker behind us, and he was moving into the right lane anyway. Um, so I didn't mark that, but. I would have signaled about the 200 yard marker because of your speed.
Minor fault number 10 for mirrors. Uh, Pamela, there was no mirror tricks when you left this roundabout. You did signal, which is great. Your position was excellent going through the roundabout, but it's mirror signal manoeuvre, not signal manoeuvre. Oh, I'm liking this, Pam. I'm liking this. Now, this is another hot spot where learners fail the driving test. When you come to a bog standard roundabout like this, if you're going left or right, it's a given that you pick the left lane for turn left and the right lane for turn and right. Now, when you go straight ahead at a roundabout, use learners, you have to look on approach for road markings. If there's no road markings, then keep the car to the left. Now, Pamela sees the road markings gets the mirror work in and goes to the right lane. Well done, Pamela. Had you did go in the left lane, I would have expected you to turn left and let the examiner redirect you. If you do turn left there, there's a cinema in the McDonald's. Maybe take the examiner for a McDonald's, but it'll just redirect and fetch you back out. Whatever you do, do not go straight ahead from the left lane or you will record a serious fault. Minor fault number 11, Pamela. Oh, wait, where's the mirror work to leave this roundabout? You put your signal on, which is great, but there could have been somebody come around in the wrong lane, and I've seen this happen before, so you need that left door. It's the most important mirror here when leaving this roundabout from the right lane. After have a little giggly, look at the ducks blocking the road on the roundabout. These would be good blockers, Pamela. These ducks, if you'd be getting there a bit early, I would have expected you to drive straight onto the roundabouts because the ducks had blocked the cars to the right. from Pamela here she spots the mini roundabout well ahead and deals with it really well she even signals to leave it I'm not too worried if you don't signal leave the mini roundabout because sometimes there's not enough time but this is all good work Pamela because a lot of learners miss these roundabouts and drive straight over the top of them Excellent, Pamela. This is excellent. This is another hot spot in Sullen. But they turn right at these lights. They turn right from the left lane, but you're looking at the road markers and you go over to the right. This is great. Another thing what throws learners on this is the hill start. Um, some bottle it all together, but I think you do it really well. So, brownie points, um, Pamela. Well done. See the advanced stop line for cyclists, learner drivers? If you're the leading car and you stop in that, you are toast on the driving test.
another red car before the, the, the next bit. Just like to pull in on the left. Let's go further forward. That'll do. Thank you. I'll do there. Right, this is a manoeuvre, pull up alongside the red car, just reverse the back into a palm position within two car lengths of clue. Pamela, uh, you get a minor fall for control because you have to shunt it back out and get back in again. Very impressed. Now, learners, when you hit the curb on your test, don't panic. You haven't feel for it. What you need to do is just be calm, just like um, Pamela is. Just go look all around and go forward and shunt it backwards again. Pamela, the observations were very, very impressive. When you got it in accuracy, very, very impressive in the speed of the car. This is excellent. Well done. A lot of learners would have bought this on test and then not looked all around. There would have been a car coming that would have pulled out and failed for that. Um, would have tried to mount the curb. Or would have just given in and getting flustered. But you stay calm. Very impressive, Pamela. and left. 
nice, palm the nice. Pulling up the convenient place on the left, you had junctions to the right and to the left. And you pull in between the junctions. So this is good work, Pamela. Well done. This is more like it. Final minor fall for Pamela, pulling up too far away from the curb. Um, I have seen them pull about a metre away from the curb and fail for it. This is over a drain's width. It's not nowhere near a metre, but it's it's worth a minor fault. Um, why Pamela's done this is she just took her eyes off the curb when she's pulled in. Right, how do you think you've done? Um, too serious fault. This is close to being a serious spot. Oh yeah, it? it's not close enough to the curb. See you me, you get away with that by the skin of your teeth. <laughs> um, what do you think you've done? Two serious faults. What were they? The big roundabout, and then there was also one where I hesitated. The last one um, before the sat nav uh, switched off. You missed one gap there, you're absolutely right. You've got one serious fault. Ah, okay. All the places I would have thought you would have failed, you didn't fail, which is very surprising. <laughs> you know, you come to traffic lights. You will arrive at your destination at 10:54 a.m. I don't think um, I don't think I've got a picture of that sign. Let's have a look. No, I haven't. You know the temporary lights that was. Yes, did they stop too on. close? Yes, you did. But there wasn't. Go on. I think if there weren't controlled lights, it would have been fine where I stopped. It would have, but there was a sign on the left saying when when red light shows wait here. Oh, now, I have missed that. You I went to call and personally, I think it's a bit harsh, but I was talking to one of the instructors of the day and he was on about his instructor feeling for the same thing. So there was just the one serious fault. What did you think of some of the routes? Um, yeah, they're trickier. There's loads of roads where you have to you have to drive with the 20. Yeah. And you have to be careful in case you miss the uh, markings. Yeah. Um, it's harder than Durham, isn't it? Do you think? It is, yeah, and I think the traffic's uh, heavier as well. Yeah. Right, we're going to head back now, but I, that was, wasn't too bad for a first mod test over here, so well done. Go on, off we go, already. We're going to follow the sun now, okay? Okay. <laughs> 